Oh, right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? So just the other day, I saw probably the greatest StarCraft stream I've seen in at least two or three years. Basically, what happened is Lyric, who is one of the OG streamers on Twitch, he was the biggest streamer for at least two or three years and still has like 20,000, 30,000 concurrent viewers watching pretty much whenever he plays any game he feels like. So I tuned into StarCraft, I saw we had over 20,000 viewers, I saw Lyric at the top of the category, and I immediately clicked on it and was like, oh cool, I feel like I saw him play a few games maybe a, a year, or maybe three years ago, like, and had a big viewership, and I remember it being a lot of fun, but I couldn't really remember, like, what was his skill level like, and, you know, let, let's check it out, let's see what's happening. Little did I realize that I was going to be tuning into one of the funniest streams I've watched in the longest time, it was beautiful you can tell he hasn't been watching starcraft hasn't played in years couldn't remember any of the hotkeys had no idea what a real good build was but he was having so much fun and just the the journey of discovery as he played was truly wondrous within a few games of watching i could already tell he'd scraped the rust off quicker than almost any other game it could and i knew this because his wall offs were nearly perfect i mean every game some of the best wall offs i've literally ever seen Hero, best Protoss in the world, would be super proud of this. Unironically, because let's be real, Hero also has trash wall-offs. <laughs> Though maybe not quite this bad. Maybe not this bad. <laughs> but I mean, this is, this is a problem everyone has when they haven't practiced in a while. It's just so funny, man. Like, some of these openings were absolutely ridiculously sized, and he wouldn't even notice sometimes. All right, so it wasn't long till he was getting the true StarCraft 2 experience. In this game especially... I thought it was really hilarious. So I want to cast this with you guys off his stream. You guys will hear him talking. We'll try to uh, not talk over each other too much. He just typed forward slash DND trying <laughs> to do it. A lot of this game initially is just remembering how to counter cheese. Just remembering how to counter cheese, not bad. I think he's trying to put on do not disturb because he's getting spammed message by a hater. Being a big streamer, you have weird people with no life who follow you yeah, around and spam abusive messages. Firefox. The Protoss are going to steal your Vespine. Wait, 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 wait. The firebots? Uh, you gotta, the Terran are gonna send their fucking firefox. The Protoss are. <laughs> the Terran are gonna harass you with their firefox? I think he's talking about Hellions. They're gonna steal your Vespian. Gas steal for Protoss. Uh, rush with uh, what he just did. I see if I. I think he got it, cannon rushed in the last game. More attention, I would have known. I mean, at the same time, it looked like he had some at his base, like he was trying to. Um, do some other shit instead. Five probes queued up. Oh, five probes queued up. Pylon is 25 seconds late. <laughs> What's great is when you watch Lyric play, you can tell he's a high level gamer because his mouse accuracy is pretty good and his speed with moving around. And he uses a couple control groups, like two and three for his builder probe and his scouting probe. But like his build order is just non-existent. It's, it's so amazing. He has one Vespian gas. I mean, that doesn't really mean shit right now. Like, I might as well put a forge down. You can see he's still trying to figure out, should I go forge or gateway? Oh, whoa, Two pilots before any other buildings. He's just having a lot of fun. <laughs> Five probes queued up the entire early game. It's amazing because the thing is, like, there's a lot of players out there who would say, this is bad that he's doing. That's bad. But he's just having fun while he plays. So this, the aim of this video is not to poop on his playstyle. As much as I'm going to make fun of how, you know, inefficient some of his things are, you got to keep in mind, he's having fun playing and just doing it his own way. And I actually think this is such a good example of how you can hop on the ladder, have fun. He's going to scout to see if they're, they're coming across the map to attack him. But yeah, he's literally playing with no idea of what could happen. A lot of the times when he's playing, he's like, what's that unit? You know, he called the Hellions Firefoxes or something. Forge. I need a cybernetics. Oh, I think he wants to wall off, but that is, that is of course, still once again, we've got a lovely wall off there. So this build order, he's got four pylons, gateway, forge, cybercore, double gas. Get, um, a stalker out. He's going to try and make a stalker, okay? So he's thinking about what unit so to I make first. Stop him from doing his bullshit. He's in about gold two or gold three, that. guys. So he wants the stalker to stop to his opponent doing his bullshit. So I think what this tells us, this the way he's building the cannons, he's already worried about a reaper jumping up the cliff, right? So he's like, oh, I need a stalker. What's great is that at this level of Starcraft, everything is a conscious we'll thought a and decision, one. right? Whereas like any experienced player is like, well, of course, you just build a stalker straight away at the start of PPT. Hurry, hurry, hurry. For him, he's getting to enjoy tasting every single decision he makes as a player. 
Oh, he's going to chrono his first stalker and warp gate at three minutes into the game. He's, de he's definitely going to come from here. I, unless he goes all the way around like a fuck, I don't know. He Fight. thinks he can jump in the back of his base. You can't jump in the back of your base, man. <gasps> oh, it's so funny. This is beautiful, dude. I just, I love it. This is actually just so much fun. So, I think what's so funny about this as well... He doesn't have a second base yet. Okay, so he knows he's up so against he's a one base. one base right now. What conclusion do we draw? Okay, we got him out. I could go for the second base and just turtle a little bit. Okay, so he, if he's on one base, but if I get a second base and turtle... We should be okay. So this is the thought process here. He's still worried about the Reaper, which clearly isn't coming. I just assume all these dudes do that initially. I love how this is this is absolute like this is the number one like kind of rookie or rusty player thing. Where are basically you're so worried about what happened in the last game, you're countering it in the next game, even though there's so many options in StarCraft, that's like a surefire way to be playing against the phantoms of previous games rather than your current game. That's uh, amazing. He, he's got such good map vision though for a player of his level, and notice the way he's very quick to queue up the probe okay. and stuff. Those are converting. It's an Let's odd mismatch armor. of abilities. I might just go basic. And notice that he uses the hotkey for gateway and pylon. But almost every other building, you're going to see him click on the command card over here. Like he just clicked for plus one armor. Clicking for upgrades isn't that rare, even amongst some pretty high level players. Very rare amongst pros. But, so of course, here. it's very rare at this out. level. Does he set his rally point? I don't think he set yeah, the rally point to the natural. I would not, I could, I, I should probably get an observer. So he wants an observer now. You see, I like this. It's... Everything is a response oh, to the situation. Tanks. Oh, fuck. There is a tank. Oh, fuck. So he's cancelling his gateways. Wait, why is he cancelling his gateways? Because he doesn't want gateways. Oh, he wants to go air because he's changing his I whole think he, strategy. He's definitely turtling one base. He's probably going to get like a bunch of fucking stargates or uh, star, whatever those battleships are. Oh, he's calling BCs. Yeah, that actually makes right. sense. This is a really good okay, call. This is a really good call. This. Yeah, if someone's turtling like this, they're probably going BC harass. That's wild that he actually knows that already. Those those battle stars or something, yeah, <laughs> I think he calls them. These guys out. I might as well actually cancel this. I'm going to go full air. Okay, so he's canceling ground armor, uh, and he's saying, let's go full one. air. And you know what? I say it's All a good right. call. It's obviously he hasn't confirmed that's what's happening, so this could backfire. But he's right! There's a battle cruiser in the main. Okay, so there's a BC in the main. How is that so fast? It's a six minute one base battle cruiser. It's a minute and a half late. <laughs> to be fair, for Gold League, it is pretty damn quick. I, 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 will, I will give him that. I will give him that. The battle cruiser oh, there as well. Lucky bitch. The damaged health, uh, the, the, the colored team health bars, for me, is one of the most off putting things watching the game. For me, I find it very uh, gross. I really like the red, yellow, green. Makes it really easy to identify low hit point units healthy units, what to target, fire in what situations. It's not like this is the worst thing, but I definitely, I know a lot of people like yes, playing this. Tanks. I hate it. I hate it. I guess he's like, all right, this siege tank. Did you just cancel the void ray? Oh no, build more voids, dude. All right, so you can see he's clicking down there in the command card. He's going to go twilight council. The void ray wants to kill the battle cruiser, but remember battle cruisers can teleport home and go home and repair. So he's really hunting that BC. This is the classic tunnel vision problem. Oh. But you know what? That was a really quick response. This is what I'm talking about. He's so quick at some things. But no control groups for his units. Definitely an issue. Oh my god, did he just recall stalkers from the main to the natural using the mini map? <laughs> he just did the most high level tryhard pro gamer mouse accuracy oh, move. Such a fuck. In a situation where it was totally unnecessary. This guy is such a cuck. I gotta say, I think you're voicing every gold league player's uh, thoughts there. <gasps> He's gonna get it. Get the PC. He was about to say, oh no, but he realized, no, no, he killed it just before it teleported over. He kills the first battle cruiser here. And let's be real, I feel like this is something every gold player and, and player getting back into StarCraft in the last year or two can really commiserate with, because in the lower leagues, especially up to about plat, Turtle Terran into BC Harass is like, it, it is a plague on the lower leagues. So many players just don't know how to deal with it. They struggle against it. They panic against it. And I think for everybody, it was so therapeutic watching Lyric deal with exactly what they have suffered at the hands of so many times. Of course, man. Of course I need more pylons. I like that he has an ongoing conversation with his adjudicator. 
And his army's running back and forwards. He's really nervous about where that next BC is coming from. Oh, he's going to lose his Stargate power. Oh, no. But he's got three Void Rays already. Oh, it's a two-prong. Look at this. There's a Void Ray on his natural that he's not that he's missed. Oh, he's going to kill it, though. Oh, he gets it. That's big. That's big. But he hasn't noticed the one in his natural. He's losing so many probes right now. Oh, wait. Actually, no. He's losing pylons. The BC wasn't attacking probes till right now. But wow, this guy is such a bitch. This guy is such a know. bitch. <laughs> There's units on the front as well, but I think it's just a bunch of unupgraded marines, which means, yeah, he can A-move that. Oh, he's A-clicking on the units. A he A-moves, though. He corrects the miss micro. Pulls back a weak void rate. This is what I'm talking about. This man is having fun just playing with all these different little things. They are not the biggest priority by any means, but there's something beautiful about watching a man with such high level, unique individual plays. And the strategy is like watching a, 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 a yeah, toddler. Is, I'm gonna see if I can, I kinda want a couple more. Just scrolling more crayons across in. the screen. He's saying, okay, I want, I want more or something. He's gonna go across. He's gonna build a forward pylon so he can warp in. But with the BCs being able to harass at any moment, counterattacking is very dangerous. So he's gonna he's gonna try and warp in more stalkers at home. He's got more void rays building. Um, but the problem is if a BC flies in, he's got no defense. And of course there's missile turrets in the main base. Now you could prismatic align and kill that really quickly. Oh, he's gonna go for the depots. Okay, but he's got uh oh units attacking him at home. Units attacking him at home. He could easy kill that BC. Oh, pull back from the turret though. Pull back from the turret. Oh my god, he doesn't realize there's something in his natural. I don't know what it is. Oh, it's just a few marines. His stalkers kill it. His stalker warps and, warp and kills it. Easy. Oh, look at that. He pulls back the weak void ray. Oh my god. Oh, he may lose the void ray, but well worth it to kill a battle cruiser. Oh my god. He's really messing up this Terran right now. If you just hold positions, those, they're going to do so much. He's trying to warp in stalkers, which with the battery and the void rays popping out could do okay. I don't think he knows about the hold position button, unfortunately. Dude, this is such an exciting game. There is something about. Oh my god. The natural is only just finished for this Terran. The Terran is being BC harassing with no expansions, unless he has a corner base, which ah, is fuck me, man. very common. Ah, oh, fuck me, man. He is frustrated. But you know what? If there's no corner bases, he's good. And if he scouts down the left, he might find a corner base in the top left of the map. Ah, oh, but he's not thinking about that. Low level players very rarely think about the corner bases. But when you see Turtle, you see Battle Cruisers, always, always, always check for the corner bases, man. Thing is, has he rebuilt his probes on his natural? It feels like he must have, because I see a lot of probes on the minimap, but I don't think his gas is mining very well. Oh man, yeah, I mean, he scouted most of the bases. If this is really only the second base of the Terran, he's doing good. This is a Florencio-style transition. Unupgraded Marines after battle cruisers on one base. It's a really bad transition. I think he might be able to just win. <laughs> I love that he counterattacked after killing so many beasties. I was saying it's dangerous, but you know what? Don't let yourself get stuck in a passive mindset. Good way to play. Stalkers are getting hammered by a siege tank. I don't think he realizes. And there's a BC counterattacking him right now. Remember, this guy's going to try and base trade him. Oh, this is nasty. The BC is doing damage. His stalkers are getting hammered. There's, there's two siege tanks up there that are killing him. The void oh rays could God, do it. Just fucking get all the voids, man. He's trying to double click them, but he was single clicking. He kept misclicking there. Oh, no. Okay, at least that tank goes down. If you can kill the other siege tank, that'll be good. But because he doesn't use control groups, it's so hard to micro. Oh my god. Okay, he gets through to the siege tanks, which means the stalkers could hammer it. But he's really struggling to use these units separately. He wants to tell the stalkers to attack the turrets. But he doesn't know how to select them separately from the void rays. So he's struggling. Oh no, and his economy is getting hammered. He's trying to build more voids, but that's his last money. He's just lost every single probe on his bases. And you can see he's just... Oh, he's fumbling with the controls a little bit. He does get rid of the missile turret. Oh. Oh, no, 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 there's three missile turrets in there. Careful, careful, careful. Okay, he's going to go for the BC. If he can kill that real quickly, that's well worth it. Oh, man, he hasn't defended at home, though. I think he has enough units to win, but... Oh, no, he's sitting in missile turret range, clicking a command center. Oh, he throws a void ray away there. That's real nasty. Okay, he hasn't looked at home for a while. I think he should realize he's breaking this main base and just, and just do it. There we go. He's killed the command centers. Oh, he's recalling! He's actually doing a recall. Oh my god, both of his Nexus are deep in the red. That Nexus is about to die. Oh, if he loses that Nexus, he can't rebuild. The BC teleports. One hit. One hit from killing his Nexus. His main Nexus is also barely alive. Can he keep that one alive as well? Prismatic Align. Oh my god, he's going to keep both Nexi alive. But wait, that BC teleported on his second Nexus on his natural. So he's, Oh no, his, his natural's going to die if the BC clicks on it. But he's getting... Oh, he doesn't notice. He's lured away chasing this battle cruiser. The one in his natural... Come on, save it. Oh, the BC targets it. Oh, no. Oz realized. Takes out the Nexus. Okay, so these BCs. Thing is, I don't think I've seen them use Yamato. And oh, that's going to go down. Okay, that's huge. I think there's only one BC on the map. 
Which means unless this Terran has a hidden base or like thousands of resources they haven't spent, the Terran should be dead. Just because how do you ever beat that many Stalkers and Void Rays, right? We saw all the command centers go down. There shouldn't be any mining. There's a floating barracks in the corner. Is this, is this player just wanting to waste time? And wait, how did he know there was a barracks there? Hold on a second. Let's rewind. Lyric map hacking? I mean, obviously the BCs have been hiding, so he's kind of hunting in the corners and stuff. It is... It is a little weird the way he went to the corner there. Oh, Lyric is a map hacker, anybody? No, with the amount of paranoia he had and probe scouting he did early and, like, worrying about different things, I very much doubt it because if, if he is map hacking then that just makes no sense. Obviously, I was, I was kind of joking about the map hack. It looked suspicious because the BCs have been hiding on the edges of the map and coming in from there. It makes perfect sense that he'd go this hunt it down. Have enough to defend. He might have enough to defend. He says, I, I, don't, I, got blink. Did I, never I don't think so. It? He never made blink, no. I'm also not sure if he knows how to tab between the two different spellcasters. All right, he's going to go up. What's this Terran? Move up, move up, move up the ramp. Don't just, don't just hit at the edges. You got to go see what he's got, mate. Get in there. Get in there. Make sure he isn't rebuilding. Okay, I think it's dawning on him. He, he should... Yeah, this game's in the back. He's got to kill that starport. BC's building now. You can see it's in production. Bam. Shuts it down. So the Terran did have a lot of money in the bank. But look at that. Cannons are going to do some damage here. Oh, Recall's not ready. Oh, no. Recall's not... He's going to lose his last Nexus. I don't think it matters, though. He's got cannon battery. He's, he's worried. He says, are we going to lose? I can't recall it's down, man. It's so funny because this sort of situation when you're not experienced in StarCraft is so hard to add up. And the thing is, you might say, well, an experienced player knows you're ahead. I kind of do. But at the same time, I would feel a lot more comfortable if he'd actually checked the top left corner base. He hasn't checked that since the very early yes, game. Won't this one uh, probe help me survive? He's got plenty of buildings. It'll take forever for a BC to kill that. It's just one battle cruiser, and with like two cannons and a battery, I don't even know if the BC can do it. Look at that! He just queued Void Rays to A move around the edge of the map. That's exactly what you need to do. Oh, this man has played Warcraft 3 versus someone hiding their Ancient of War in the forest before. He knows you've got to scout for that along the edges with the flying units. Oh, yeah. Factory landed. Okay. I think this Terran's just wasting time at this point. Oh, no! He pulled these units back. The Void Ray didn't go to the top left. If there's still units in the top left... He must be being a bitch in a corner. Quite possibly. We already found a Why barracks hiding in the corner. Him? All right, it's come on, come on. Too long to destroy all my shit. Okay, yeah. He, he realizes as it's going to take way too long to destroy all of his shit. Oh, he oh finds a hidden God. base. But it looks like a new one. It looks like it's pretty new. It's only got a handful of SCVs. And that should take out the opponent. He's going to know once they get revealed as well. BC, for some reason, teleported to the top right. He's got three Void Rays up there. He's got three Void Rays that could go kill that. And revenge for every really, single really Gold League it. player who's tied to Battlecruiser Tank Turtle. Yes. And he gets the win. I beat Putin. The opponent's name is Putin. Joy and a little bit of just frustration and a bit of relieving of the stress as he's finally able to breathe after such an intense victory. <laughs> after a few more games on the ladder, Lyric also got to uh, encounter the famous SC2 is dead game talk. And he was very quick to shut it down. Yeah, sad this game time. <laughs> oh, I want to hear Lyric's take on this. Can still find rank? Q yeah. All right, let's see. Let's just get gas now. All right, I'm going to just block my initial ramp off. He's like, is it dead? If you can find games straight away. Yeah, I no have... idea this too fast, Lala. 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 I love the soundless logic here. I mean, honestly, it's just like, hey, I can find games instantly. There's literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people playing ladder every week. Um, I don't know if it's quite dead. All right, so now we're, I'm going to show you guys one last game here, which I thought was really cool because you can tell that Lyric played a bit in Wings of Liberty. He probably played most of his Protoss back then. At least that's my inclination because looking at the way he played this, I mean, I know he, he got big streaming WoW and then like he was one of the early, I think, DayZ streamers, um, you know, the the early uh, the early days of, uh, of, of, of Twitch kind of exploding. But watch the way he plays this game. This is actually such a fun one. 
I really enjoyed watching this. So so let's take a look and uh, just kind of react right, to it again. Now, as I only came in, so I, don't get capped. I only watched the I last few the games. My probe there. I think this was actually the game that I watched live. Now this time he started here. his pylon about 20 seconds sooner. This is later in the stream than that earlier BC game. So you can tell his build order is getting a little bit better. I think what's so funny right, though, is as he improved, I kept seeing more and more that like, he would go for a quicker expand, but then he would panic because he'd like forget his second pylon or something like that, get supply blocked. So like there was this funny thing where he was actually getting like that last game, the macro was so weak for him. As he played more, he got better macro, but he also felt more uncomfortable having more things and he felt like he was misplaying a lot more. So it's kind of funny the the thing when you when you challenge yourself in StarCraft to expand faster and macro harder, you often feel more like you're misplaying. And that can be an issue. Now he is going for a three pylon opening here, guys. So I can't say it's fantastic, <laughs> but hats off to him for just constantly queuing probes. Oh, he's gonna! Oh my god, he's only now changing his settings. Oh, he's gonna turn up the scroll speed. Yes. Oh, he's been playing with twenty percent scroll speed, and finally, that is the one setting. If you haven't changed that, anyone watching this, and you play StarCraft. Increase that scroll speed to a minimum of 40%. The default of 20 is terrible. Maru plays with uh, 40. That's the slowest of any pro player. Most pro players play with 100% scroll speed. And that is the speed when you hold your cursor on the edge of the screen, and then the screen will shift. On the default, you hold it on the edge of the screen, and the screen kind of pans, which is really nice if you're used to playing turn-based strategy games, and you like things to be very slow, and you're a slow player. But if you want to actually play with any sort of speed at a competitive level, you want to crank that speed up. And it'll feel very jolting, even if you just go from 20 to 40, but you'll adjust way quicker than you expect. So if you just stick with it for a bunch of games, you'll actually be surprised how quickly you get used to it. Also, I've coached people who use the arrow keys on their keyboard to move around. One of the worst habits ever. TLO, I think, is the only pro who uses that, and he would use it for, like, spreading creep or something like that. Terrible terrible okay, i hate it i think it's awful i think even he kind of giggles at himself that he uses right. it occasionally <laughs> realizing that it's very suboptimal now here we've got the classic pvz wall off guys cannon in front of the wall rather than behind it also pylons in front of the wall rather than behind it basically the opposite of what you should do but holy crap if it just ain't bloody adorable okay h h h h h h Z e I've already failed. He's doing way better than the previous game. Remember the previous game? Yeah, he started the Stalker at this time. But he's got his Nexus so much quicker. And he's got more probes. So I actually think his macro is infinitely better in this game. It's just funny because I don't think he realizes it. And you can see he's actually got the best wall off he built in the entire stream. It's the only wall where it's been solid. The number of times there has been a zealot guarding a three-space gap that like six zerglings could squeeze through around him at a time <laughs> has been insane. This is the only tight wall that he ever built in this game and he put the zealot on hold position. That's what the HHH was. I, I was really impressed. It's still super bustable, but in terms of Ling's just running straight past, he's actually solid against it for the first time in the entire stream. And it pays off! It pays off! Oh no, now they're not in the wall. They're not in the wall now. <gasps> he fixed it though, he realized, he realized. He's gonna get some sentries. And a robo. Okay, now the thing is, robo sentries, this is what Wings of Liberty SC2 Protoss was all about. It was all about force fields and robo units behind them. Colossus, and mortals, that sort of stuff. Now, I'm not sure if he changed his rally point to his natural. I think he did. So he's automatically rallying probes from the main to the natural. The improvement is so tangible. Double Robo. And, uh, we have a good defense force here. We have a good defense force here, he says. Which is, is kind of true. I would like a shield battery as well, but... Eh. That was him reading his supply. 42 out of 70. A lot of people would say that's inefficient. You've got too many pylons. And he definitely did early. But it's better to have a bigger supply gap than to be getting supply blocked all the time. So if you guys are always getting supply blocked, you're probably trying to stay a bit too close. Try to always build one or two extra pylons, overlords or depots each time you're playing. It'll make it way smoother. Oh, he's, he's remembering Wharfgate. 
those are converting now. Yes. Observer, control five. You can see how he's got this shopping list in his head. He's kind of reciting things. He's like, control five, shift five, add the robos onto that, build an observer, build in a model, make stalkers, wait, wait for warp gate, let's cancel that, build the stalkers. It's kind of cool, because this is what happens the more StarCraft you play, right? And especially as an experienced gamer, you're kind of adding to this shopping list. And I think even if you guys are massive noobs, you should be really inspired by this sort of stream, because you can see, even though he's a big noob with StarCraft, he actually does improve quite quickly. Because he is starting to just add things to his list of priorities and things to remember. He'd still improve way faster if he followed a proper build guide or something. But it's not always about improving at lightning pace. Often it's about actually just enjoying the process of improving. I like this choice. Pulling behind his wall. That's a lot of Roach Ravager Zergling. He's making sentries, zealots. He's going to try and defend that choke point. The problem is he might get units trapped up there in those buildings. On that second robo especially. Not very good building placement. He's getting ready to attack. I it does look like he's getting ready to attack. You can see Lyric's a little bit nervous right now. He's freaking out. Okay, he's going to try and move out because his units were stuck behind each other there. He's got a good force. He's trying to just mass a mortal sentry right now, and that's a good army for killing roaches and zerglings. <laughs> I'm trying, bro. These pilots take five years. <laughs> There's something glorious about what someone watch, watching someone just wrestle with the game, man. He F2'd his observer home. He's like, no, you're meant to be scouting. I mean, I still have that happen on a daily basis. The number of games I go to look at my observer in a PVT and I realize I F2'd at home to defend a Widow Mine drop, and I'm like, oh no. He's like right around here. It looked like he fucked up. He got scared. He fucked up, he got scared? Or did you get scared? It was a fake out. We only saw a few roaches and zerglings. You usually imagine there's a big army behind it, but it's really hard to actually tell here. All right, where are you at? Where are you at? He's probably going to attack from the other side. Where are you at? Where are you at? He's going to attack from the other side. So you can see he's a little paranoid here. And it'd be really good if he sent some more hallucinations and observers out to try and see what the enemy army looks like. But check it out, guys. Seven and a half minutes, eight minutes. He's over 100 supply. He's got a decent army. He's got upgrades. He's got a lot of force fields. Problem is he doesn't have splash damage. So his army's not going to scale very well with time. And that Nexus is definitely not placed correctly. But better than nothing. The scary thing is if you've left them alone for this long... Dude, I've literally constructed the living shit out of pylons. Then they, they might have some uh, more stuff. He's only building one or two pylons at a time. The Dude, difference the is he's got way more army? production than in the previous games, remember, guys. So in his previous games, he had really weak production and economy. So he's he's actually... He's building two pylons, what feels like constantly. And what he should do is he should just build five pylons half as much rather than just one or two pylons every 20 seconds. Pylons for vision and supply. Really clever idea. He's got this observer. He's like... He's looking for these hidden bases. There's no hidden bases in this game. But I love that he's building Colossus now. And he remembers Colossus Ranger. You can see he's even very quick to drop the Chronos. And he realizes getting more Colossus is key. He says, I need two of them and then I'll go in. So he wants splash damage. And when he has two, he's already picking his attack timing ahead of time. Which is actually huge. <gasps> Big army on the south! Big army on the south! Oh no! Oh no! Okay, he's watching. Force fields! He needs force fields! Oh my god, that's a big Ravager Ling army. Good force fields! Oh, big Biles landing on his immortals. Oh, oh, big, big Biles landing on his face. And that's a lot of force fields. He just wasted a lot of energy. But he kills all the Zerglings. Not the best engage from the Zerg. And pretty good response from him, all things considered. I gotta feel like Banelings with speed would be an absolute disaster for him. If he's caught not watching. But if he's watching, okay, 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 okay. force fields are pretty good. Normally you want to leave these rocks up as a Protoss player. But I think since he's got a big fighting army, this is not too bad. He's got two Colossus out now. The second one's starting to march down. He's going to build a bunch more gateways as well. So he's actually going to use that third base income. This is by far the best macro build we've seen from him. It's actually really sick. If he just got an Observer kind of sieged up in the Zerg base to see what the army was of the Zerg earlier, that would be great. The only problem is he could be surprised by Muters. Oh, oh, big corrosive piles. What is that that he's shooting at me? He doesn't know about the Ravager. Oh my god. It's a weird AoE move, he says. Did they kill my fucking second, my first Colossi? Did they kill my... 
No, it just joined the army. That's the classic thing where it's rallying across the map. He's like, where's my second Colossi? Looks at home, starts raging, looks back at his army. There's two Colossi standing right there. Classic. So he doesn't know what the bile does. Now, funnily enough, the bile counters force fields, but we haven't actually seen the Zerg use it for that yet. Oh no, he's not dodging the biles. He does take some big biles, but the Zerg's not using bile to break force fields. He's only using it on the army. And these are actually god tier force fields because the Zerg running around in the big blob just cannot get past the force fields. Even though the Zerg has roach speed and a big roach ravager army, you're not going to get through mass force field or mortal colossus unless you're using either a big surround or ravager biles to break the force fields. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Why is he recalling? Why is he recalling? What? Why did he do that? He recalls half his army. The other half has to walk home. What? Oh, I want to hear his thoughts. This was such a bad move. I like the idea. It's just not well executed. I got scared. I got scared, man. <laughs> yeah, you did. You did get scared, man. Oh my god, the Roach Ravage is coming in. Okay, okay. But look at that. The Wall of Immortals, and even just with one or two Force Fields, defending off creep. That was beautiful, beautiful play by him. Dude, this is actually sick. He's continuing to upgrade. This is what I, what I love is he's been scouting, upgrading, expanding, growing his army, and using spells in, in, in the fight. What I love about this is it's not just one type, sort of StarCraft. So many people, when they play StarCraft, they're like, people are like, just get good at macro. Right, just right, get right, good right, at this right, thing. Right, right. Isolating skills can be good and effective for learning, but what's way more fun is playing the game fluidly. And that's exactly what Lyric's doing here. He's saying, oh, should I just push? Should I wait for the next round of robo units? So. He's trying to figure out, be decisive. He's casting spells. He's macroing. He's upgrading. I, I just, th there's this glory in watching this because I really feel like Lyric as an experienced general gamer who has played a little bit of StarCraft in years gone by is like remembering how to play the game and doing it in a way that is so much fun here. And look at that, there's only a small pack of Roach Ravager left. He's minced so much Roach Ravager already this game. And I think he's just out macroed the opponent. Out macroed, out engaged. And look at that. Oh man, that is a meat grinder. The, the range of the Colossus with that plus like seven, eight yes. Immortals underneath. The Zerg has way too many Overlords. There's like 35 Overlords. There. That's in a laser of Overlords. Iroh's going to tap yes. out Uncle Iroh. All right, all right. And all right, all right. I get scared sometimes. I don't know when to push, dude. I get scared sometimes. I don't know when to push, dude. I think you speak for all of us. Potato IRL, aka Lyric, we've all been there. Uh, oh, this was so much fun. I hope you enjoyed this look at, at such a fun streamer, just relearning the game, figuring out the basics. And you can tell he was never a top tier player but he just has so much fun playing, <laughs> figuring things out as he go. So there's so many games where he'd be like, oh no, they got me with they got me with the cannon rush and he'd be so paranoid about the cannon rush next game and it's like a Terran player. It's just great to see him slowly figure things out, piece it all together. And he just fearlessly was having fun playing all aspects of the game and just embracing the mistakes and really putting himself out there. It was something refreshing to see. It's so rare to see this level of inexperience just diving to the StarCraft ladder and broadcast it for all of us to watch. I do hope we get to see more Lyric in the next few weeks grinding StarCraft ladder. Uh, Lyric, if by any chance you see this, which I doubt you will, I would love to hop on and give you some free coaching, teach you a really fun build or something like that. If you want to try a different style of StarCraft, basically just shoot the shit, have some fun, maybe teach you a tip or trick. Whether you take me up on that or not, just keep kicking ass, mate. That's all for now. Thanks for watching, everybody. Catch you in the next one. Goodbye and good night.